All right, so it's time to start closing in these uh, wheel holes. I have to do that first uh, before I can get involved with the closures in the trunk area because they lead into these. So I have to find out where the limits are, and this uh, these panels will uh, establish that limit. Um, those of you who've ever done any racing are familiar with this technique of closing it in. It's uh, called a crush panel. Um, normally, if you're uh, putting it in a race car, it's made out of aluminum. To do just that, if you have an impact on the side, uh, what happens is is the uh, this is usually made out of aluminum, and it takes the impact, and it doesn't damage the inner uh, wheel tub, which is a steel winter uh, wheel tub. Anyway, um, normally what you would do if you were closing this in, uh, say on a regular street car, would be you would have an inner panel here, and then you would um, put these uh, panels up to it. Um, I'm not going to put that inner panel in, uh, which is usually you have to put an inner panel in because of uh, for a stone guard, so that you don't have stones hitting the inside of this outer panel and causing dimpling. Well, these cars, uh, the, the Challengers, I should say, the modern cars have a uh, a rubber inner uh, wheel tub, and that does the job of uh, a stone guard. So I'll be taking those wheel tubs and then reinstalling those and modifying so they fit this hole and then I'll be extending them out to uh, complete this panel. Also I have an issue of well, I have to get this thing down and on the ground and running so I can basically drive it up and down a little bit up and down the driveway see if we have any problems with rebound and any kind of interference in which case if I start if I put an inner panel in here then I'd have to hack all of that back out so what will happen here is if there's any interference, I'll just be able to trim this lip a little bit or I'll be able to modify this lip. So initially what I start with is these paper panels uh, to get the pattern um, and I usually split it in two at the very top instead of trying to make one continuous panel. It's hard to make sure that you maintain an even roll with a, with a uh, paper pattern so it's better to split it up into smaller pieces. Then uh, it's also gapped off the body on the inside about an eighth of an inch, which will be, uh, when they're finally installed, will be uh, siliconed in uh, with um, just regular, uh, you know, household silicone. Um, and you might think that that's not a very uh, good uh, secure joint, but one of the worst jobs that uh, you have when you're taking post-race uh, car apart uh, is a uh, is pulling the crush panels out and trying to get the uh, aluminum panels separated from the outer steel panels that are siliconed, and uh, you have to really get a knife and just cut that silicone because it's it's almost impossible to pull it off if it's done right. Anyway, so that's where I'm at now, and uh, I've got to make these out of steel. So here are the two panels um, made up out of steel. Threw some bead rolls in there to kind of strengthen them up, but uh, probably didn't need to. Um, just to force a habit, used to make these out of aluminum. Uh, this is a uh, 035 steel, so it's pretty stout on its own. Anyway, got a series of um, rivet holes uh, drilled here. I'll be putting them in with some uh, silicone and some uh, steel rivets. Uh, never use aluminum rivets because they can loosen up and... Um, so um, steel on steel. Anyway, this is so there's a little step in one panel so that the at the at the top of the wheel uh, tub it overlaps like this, and this will be also riveted to this. Um, uh, one thing about this step is that if you're not in a situation where you're putting in the um, rubber inner liners on on a car like this is. Uh, be aware or be mindful of the rotation and the direction of the the tires. If you're going, if you know the car is going to be in a situation where there's a race race car or something like that, and you run the risk of blowing a tire, what you don't want is the tire to come around and grab this edge and then peel this back um, and cause further damage to your car. So what you have to do is when you step it. Be mindful, like I said, of the rotation of the tire. In this case, the tire. Uh, this is the back side of the wheel uh, tub right here, back the quarter panel. So you can see that the tire is rotating in this direction, 
as it rotates into that in that direction it goes in this direction here so that if anything were to slap this it wouldn't be catching this edge it would just slide over uh, to the next panel and this is the forward forward section like this so with the wheels rotating in this direction as you're driving along if something would happen make sure that that uh, that joint is not vulnerable to uh, debris catching it like that anyway probably not necessary to know but uh, like I said if you don't have those inner rubber tire uh, um, shields like this car is going to have um, it's uh, something you got to be aware of okay so I have the uh, front and rear portions of this uh, crush panel made out of steel and in the front half is installed permanently the rear half I've just got that clecoed in uh, temporary because I have to be able to take that one out in order to work on the fill tube for the gas uh, that runs over the top of the tire and then down into this uh, there you can see that little foil that's the breather right there and then the whole thing is covered with the uh, rubber inner liners that uh, the stone guards that uh, fit inside these uh, the wheel tubs anyway I'm uh, working on the second side on the right hand side over there now uh, I've got the patterns made I've got to make the panels themselves all right so uh, I've got these uh, uh, crushed panels on the right hand side of the car completed uh, I just wanted to show you before I painted them up or pulled them back out and painted them up um, <clears throat> how this uh, pocket came out as far as this where this uh, tire pressure monitoring uh, module goes um, that's all I'll worked out but anyway the next thing I'm going to be working on is the trunk drops uh, that would be the pieces that excuse get this uh, get you a better view right in here that uh, connects the bottom of the quarter panels up to the floor of the trunk so the first thing that I've done is I've got this, uh, let me see if I can get back far enough. I've got this adjuster that I welded in here to hold the position of the rear quarter panel at the lower end over here, just got it tacked on, on both sides. And that uh, way I can make sure it's symmetrical on either side and uh, also that it's held firm while I'm making my patterns. In order to get started with this panel, and it looks kind of daunting because there's all kinds of things going on here. Uh, and um, So uh, what I've uh, promoted before is just try to straighten out the lines whenever you got a chance to. Um, so the first thing I did is what I broke a three-quarter inch uh, lip on a, a piece of uh, scrap uh, sheet metal. And the reason for that is, is you could see that the floor of the Challenger comes straight back. And of course, the, ch the charger body has a taper to it, starting from there. So, in order to establish, I'm going to have to cut uh, uh, mark uh, cut along here in order to establish a straight line. Uh, so, what that does when I put that dummy panel in there is it allows me to put a straight edge up against the panel itself, the mock-up panel, and gives me a trim line to cut that uh, floor of the Challenger out uh, at a taper so that I can put a straight panel from one end to the other without having any kind of crazy uh, shapes to deal with. So I'll do that first, I'll trim that off, and then I'll uh, proceed from there. All right, I don't know if you exactly see that, but now that the, the trunk floor of the Challenger is cut off parallel with the bottom of the quarter panel, I'm able to clamp this uh, mock-up piece of sheet metal up to the bottom flange on the quarter panel and now you can see it lines up with my cut over here so that this piece can be a dead straight uh, piece uh, when I make it up. In, in starting to make up the pattern um, I'm taking it in small bites. I'm, I'm just doing the forward section right now because it's easy to handle. It's a lot of different angles that have to be accommodated. This is where the uh, the crush panel comes down on the inner fender tub, and then it bends back like this. Uh, so I needed to put a flange on here to attach the crush panel to. And this, of course, attaches to the bottom of the quarter panel. This will overlap over the top of the floor 
that's existing in the Challenger. And I'll show you how that looks real quick. But this is just a partial pattern. Just the forward section of the panel that I'm trying to mock up also. With a pattern like this, it's good to actually make it up out of sheet metal because um, this, even though this is pretty stout pattern paper here, um, sometimes it has a tendency to, um, when, when a panel is big, or uh, it has a tendency to flop a little bit, and uh, you need to make sure that everything's going to be exactly where you, you want it to land. Okay, hopefully you can see what's going on here. This is the flange uh, that connects to the bottom, and I'll be uh, drilling this out and plug welding that. You can see where it uh, bends over and, and lays up on top of the um, existing Challenger floor pan. And what I'll be doing there is, again, drilling it out and plug welding it. And here you can see where it picks up the bottom of the... Uh, crush panel which again I'll be uh, fastening it to the flange that I have that's turned in that direction so that, that would uh, complete the uh, the closure in this area I have to work myself a pattern up that will fit to the back which is a little bit more complex but like I said just breaking it up into small pieces so that I get uh, I'm able to get these little details a little bit more accurately this didn't turn out to be too bad as far as uh, complexity back here. The first thing that I did was I took a piece of uh, sheet metal and I bent it uh, three quarter by three quarter so that I could attach it to the top of my other pattern uh, so that it projected out the floor level all the way out to this back corner. And believe it or not, in the department of it's uh, sometimes better to be lucky than good, there's a little flange here on this uh, roll pan that it just decks right out to that point which is nice I don't have to cut anything out uh, also there's a flange here that's perfect for finishing out this inside corner so I've got a little bit of a bend here I don't know if we'll be able to make this in one piece or not I might have to when I get the actual panel made I might have to add this little this little patch in here anyway this is a uh, representative of both the front and the rear of this uh, trunk drop um, uh, closeout panel. Uh, what this also does is this flange over here will give me my surface to, to bring the rest of the floor around uh, over here. Anyway, that's where I am with the pattern. So this is uh, the pattern I ended up with. Um, let's see, uh, that's the front piece and then all the way to the back. Obviously I'll make it out of one piece of metal. I'm showing a little bit of a bow at the bottom of here uh, on the uh, quarter bottoms. But what I'm just going to do is I'm going to straight line it from here to here, make this break, and then this flange will be able to be clamped down to compensate for the bow. This doesn't ha have to sit dead on the bottom on this part, just as long as this can close up. It's a very slight bow. As you can see, if I put a straight edge over here, side to side it's not dead flat and then and that might just be an anomaly in the sheet metal stamping I don't know what it's supposed to look like but it's not enough to be concerned about you can see right here it starts to go away so it's got a little bit of a crown at the bottom like I said I'll be breaking it from here to here and then this flange will be able to be pulled down into that little bit of a bow Okay, so this is what the uh, trunk drop panel looks like it's completed. Um, a few uh, bead rolls in there just to be fancy. I'll show you what it looks like in place in a minute here. That's what it looks like um, in place uh, from the top side. I'll show you what it looks like from the bottom side in a second. Here's what it looks like from the bottom side. You can see the uh, crush panel goes up against it in the front here and you can see the slight bit of crowning here which is not a problem you just squeeze that down and squeeze down at both ends over there here and here so that should not be an issue anyway on to the other side the next piece is the corner closure um, we've got a left and a right and they're going to look like this 
Um, this is where the bumper bar comes up through the floor. And I have this step here to receive the center panel on both sides. This is a nice little bed for it to, the sheet metal to sit in, so this is all flush. Um, on the back side, there's a little quarter inch lip. And this is what is going to be the weld flange that welds to the tail panel of the car. And of course, this will lay down on top of those two uh, closures. I'll show you how that looks when I set it in the car. Okay, there's that panel uh, set into place. As you can see before, I um, made this bumper just kick up a bit just so it can make the connection to the plate uh, just high enough. Um, and um, then it fit, this panel fits just underneath of this plate. Uh, I didn't plan it that way, but it worked out that way just uh, magically. Um, so then this will all be uh, plug welded and drilled out and plug welded when it comes time. But um, this has a little safety edge to kind of give it a little strength here. Um, also, it's also lined up with this line in the trunk to kind of give it some kind of uniformity. But now you can see this whole piece is uniform all the way back to that point where it meets the car. Anyway, rinse and repeat once again. All right, before starting uh, fabrication on this final closure panel, I've added this, um, it's a one inch lip a little half inch lip going on the bottom. It's a little custom cut on the bottom. The reason I had to do that is, is I would have liked to have just butted the actual panel up and tacked it to the back here with a little break on the bottom, the back edge of it. But this has a slight curve to it. It's about a quarter of an inch crown right in the center. So it had to be stretched. The metal had to be stretched out this way to accommodate that. So I'll just get onto here in a minute and show you how it looks like, what it looks like, I should say, underneath. Okay, so this is what it looks like underneath. It's just broken over, and uh, you could see where I had to do a little relief cut here to come up the hill a little bit because there's a little profile going on here. And then this had to be bent back towards the tailpiece a little bit. I had to hammer that over just a little bit, and uh, it's tacked up along the bottom edge here. Grind that off, clean that up, prime it up, and uh, go on from there. Okay, so this is the uh, panel that's going to fill in the middle in the back. Um, as you can see, the front edge follows that uh, weird shape that the um, spare tire well has. And um, I've left these little tabs on there to make up for there's a little, these little ribs that go along here. It has to be welded up solid. Anyway, I put a little step in it around the perimeter, try and stiffen it up a little bit, and a couple of bead rolls in there also to help stiffen it up a little bit. And I fold it over about a quarter of an inch on the front edge by hand, and this will wrap over the raw edge of that panel, and this will lay flat on and be plug welded on that rim that I just showed you, that I just put together. I'll show you what uh, I meant by that front edge there, having to deal with a raw edge. This is just a straight piece of sheet metal going straight up, and you can see these little pieces here. I left a little material there so I can just go around and weld that up solid and then grind it off. And then I'll be welding from the bottom side here um, on the inside corner to attach the front of the panel to, to that. It should make a pretty strong bond right there. Anyway, that's what's next. I'll show you what it looks like when it's just dumped in there. Here it is, uh, just laying in in, uh, in place, held in with just a couple of Clecos. Um, now, this is not actually going to be the finished floor. There's going to be another layer on here because there's an insert that goes in uh, the trunk. It actually covers this uh, well here. So I'll have to make a build-up panel over here, which will not be made from metal. Um, but anyway, that'll create a a more rigid floor right here. This is just to seal it off from the outside, from the elements. Um, of course, once this is all painted up, welded in, I'll have to go around all these joints and uh, put some seam sealer on them so that we have a good uh, airtight situation back here so we don't get a bunch of, of exhaust gas up in the trunk area. And in what might seem to be a bit of uh, overkill, um, I primed this uh, panel with a, with a K2 primer uh, in areas where I knew that I wouldn't have to weld it up 
and then areas, certain areas where I knew I was going to weld it up, um, where the uh, the flanges were going to overlap, I just used a, a weld through primer. That way, there's primer in between the two panel surfaces, um, and also on the bottom side here. Um, this goes to the bottom of the quarter. I'll be welding through the quarter, which already has an um, epoxy primer on it, through uh, uh, plug welds into this uh, onto the surface that's got the weld through primer. On the top side, it's pretty much free of uh, uh, paint, uh, so that uh, while I'm welding this up on the bottom, I don't start burning paint and uh, creating a little, uh, um, you know, an excessive. Uh, outgassing from the paint so like I said it looks a little bit elaborate and it's a little you got to think a little bit which surfaces you end up uh, painting and which surfaces you end up leaving a little bit of bare metal um, but anyway this is what I ended up with and uh, so uh, I'll be welding it up in the car I already have one welded up and kind of illustrate what's going on here as you can see down here where it's welded through the bottom side of the quarter panel you know, this all would have set the paint on fire, so I just left that bare metal. And uh, up here on the bottom side, it's it's primered with the weld through primer, so that both surfaces that are in connection with each other have at least some primer between them. Um, it'll be seam sealed, of course, but um, that way both surfaces that are contacting have uh, have some primer on them. Anyway, that's my approach. With the quarter panel drops and the trunk of floor extensions right and left uh, installed and dusted in, um, it's time uh, not to put this panel in right now. What comes next is something that I should have taken care of when the car was still on the original chassis. I had forgotten that's when I took care of it on my last build. Um, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. While that looks like it's a lot of space, by the time you get your chest and everything up inside that hole, it's it's not very um, spacious. What has to happen next is I have to work on the trunk latch. Um, otherwise, working on the trunk latch will mean crawling in through the trunk itself, uh, through the back seat, and then laying on my stomach and working on it. This way, at least I could sit up and see what's going on with the trunk lid closed. So with that said, I'll have to put this uh, trunk lid on. I'll line it up and then proceed to uh, fabricate what I need to on the latches. So I'm fortunate enough that I have a picture of the way uh, that I built the uh, latch mechanism for my Dodge Charger Daytona. Now, an important thing to remember here is that the latch is installed upside down uh, from what it is in the Dodge Challenger. The Dodge Challenger and the Dodge Chargers and the Chrysler 300 so have this piece of the mechanism in the deck lid itself and then the wires are looped up through the deck lid to uh, activate this uh, either remotely from the cab or with a fob. Um, there's not enough room because of the low profile of the, uh, the, the, the old challenge the old excuse me the old charger deck lids too thin so here we're going to reverse that so we're going to put this latching mechanism, which is this piece here, and we're going to put this um, to the deck lid. So the first thing that I have to make is I have to make this bracket, <coughs> um, which you can see in this direction here. We're, kind of, we're inside the trunk in this view, by the way. And then this will bolt to the normal uh, catch location where the... Um, the old charger uh, catch goes and um, it's um, the reason it's dogged out is, is because this whole setup is kind of offset to one side it's not dead center so this will bolt up to the inside of the deck lid and then we'll attach the latch to it and then uh, we'll back engineer all of this based on the fact that we'll take and put the latch to the catch with the deck lid closed and and then we'll figure out all we need to hold all of this in place here's that bracket in place and as you can see this is the center post uh, where the actual um, 
piece would catch, the lock mechanism would catch right here. And with this offset here that I have in the bracket, it lines this uh, catch up with the center rib on the, uh, the deck lid. So it's pretty much uh, the offset is to create a centering of this pin. So the next piece that I'm going to be building is um, there's a bar that goes right behind the bracket, uh, right or the uh, catch mechanism from side to side, um, which I'll be welding these uh, standoffs to. So that's this piece here. It's got a couple of welded nuts, uh, number 10 nuts on the back side, and this will bolt to it. And then we'll put the whole mess up in the car and determine how long our stops have to be in order to make connection with the rear panel. It's a little difficult to see under here because you can see it's a little awkward. And you can see where also if I had the entire uh, trunk pan out like you would well, before you take the body off the old chassis, uh, you can sit up comfortably and do this job. But this is, uh, I'm just working on my back right now. So I've taken, and I've taken my 3 8 049 wall uh, three, um, st st tubing here and flattened it out on both ends so I could uh, bend it uh, where it meets the tail panel this part of the tail panel by the way is the part that's behind the bumper so i'm not welding to this rolled area here whatsoever because that's uh, you know you can see that so the first thing i did because i had this you know this plate already attached was i i uh rotated this till it was level got a small uh bullet level here and then i clamped this piece uh to it then i tacked it here and then to here once I had that stationary, then I could come back and put in an equal sized piece here. Um, now, also, um, hang on a second. I'll show you uh, how this all works. I left this, this handle on here for now. Uh, actually, you can leave it on all together. Um, anyway, this is the emergency handle that pulls the catch. And that pops the, the deck lid open. So let me go on the top side to show you what else I did. On the top side, I did the same thing. Got some 3 h tubing and flattened it out on both ends and came up behind this little lip over here and welded across the face and then to this plate here that's carrying the lock mechanism. It's, uh, it's pretty sturdy based on the fact that it's only attached to two pieces of sheet metal. Now, I could uh, come back in here and run just a piece of small tubing just to triangulate this to keep this from rotating, which I might do that. Um, just because I don't have that on my card, it seems to work fine. But that's an idea of how that thing is set out in midair. And there's the catch. And um, that's the uh, the deck lid closed. And let's see if we can reach under here and get that catch while I still got the floor out. And that just pops it open. The next thing I'm going to do is work on the key barrel and I'll show you what that's about when I get that all fit up. Okay, while I bought uh, a set of um, you know B-body uh, keys, ignition, door, and trunk barrel, I wasn't able to actually use the trunk barrel. The setup isn't quite right. Um, the um, I used one of the door locks that was provided in the set because it has this tab over here which allowed me to put a stud on here uh, gives you a little bit more of a firm connection and what I've done is if you can see this emergency when I pull this emergency pull right here see on the back of the this lock mechanism there's a little arm with a ring on it um, but what I want to do is I want to connect this key barrel to that so what I have here is just a piece of quarter inch tubing with a hole drilled through it and I've welded up a um, eighth inch piece of uh, rod stiff rod so that uh, it has a nice firm hook on the front edge that I could just go in here and hook through this hole here and swing it up the studs a little long here but you got to make sure that this is kicked in a yeah let me get this thing to focus over here in a kicked up position right here um, because it doesn't have enough throw if it's just laying in there relaxed. So with the key in the upright position and the barrel you know, located straight up and down, now I'll put a, a couple of uh, lock nuts 
on here leaving this floppy because this is a different angle as you can see this is going uphill and this is you know pretty much uh, straight up and down so all I wanted to do is to push down on that little um, ring right there so with that in mind now this particular key this being a small paddle it's a little difficult to just um, it's got a lot of tension there so it's a little difficult to release with just the key but um, if you just push down on the deck lid just slight them out to uh, allow for the um, there's a spring up here and this spring over here pushes the deck lid up in the air when you release it see this is a little little tab right here I can't even push it that's how much strength it's got there it is anyway what happens is that thing wants to pop up but there's a lot of tension when it's locked so it's a little difficult to turn this my car has a modern key which is a lot larger so it's got a little more leverage it's a little more easy to turn but at any rate that's the lock setup so we're good to go there and now I can finish by putting this last panel in on the floor all right, I just thought I would um, give you a view of the underside here before it's all painted out and you won't be able to see what's going on here. Uh, that's just how it looks uh, after it's all uh, welded in place. You can see you can see daylight. In place you can see daylight, it's going to have to be uh, plugged up or uh, uh, it's going to have to be seam sealed. Um, anyway, let me show you the top side now. Here's what the uh, inside floor extension looks like completed. It's all welded up. It still has to be seam sealed in. It's a pretty extensive project, uh, so I won't drag you through that. But uh, at any rate, so that's all closed up. Um, and uh, that's about it for this week. And uh, thank you for watching.